Um, okay, so so you guys are studying all things visual, and you'd kind of like to know a little bit about that world. You've probably had a couple other animator guys coming in and talking with you, and they lied to you. It's all lies. <laughs> uh, no, I'm probably going to parrot exactly what they said. Um, but I have a little different story um, in that I never went to school for animation like you guys. I, I was going to be a teacher. Now, this is a weird, sad story, and I hope you don't cry. <laughs> and there's a dog over there. That's so cool. Um, my parents never liked anything having to do with show business. Does any of your parents have that feeling like they just they don't mm -hmm. like anything? Well, my parents did not. So my dad was an engineer, and so I would draw all the time. Do any of you guys draw? You yeah. like to draw? Uh -huh. All right, all right, I love it. And I used to draw all the time, and he would always say, draw an engine. So my parents thought if you go into animation, if you go into making movies, that, oh, it's going to be horrible. You're going to have to move up to L.A. from San Diego, and it's all going to be awful. So they always discouraged that in me. So I took this. I, when I was in high school, I used to do films and stuff, and it used to win a bunch of awards and stuff. I was all, like, really happy. And they said, no way, you're not going to do that. No study in that. So you can study engineering. So it's like, ah. So I went to study biology. I was going to be a biology teacher. And I'm going to Cal State Fullerton, and, I'm, and I won this Apple scholarship. I wrote a thing, and, and they said, okay, we're going to pay for all your schooling, which was amazing. Apple's going to pay for my visit. Sweet. And then, but I'm sitting there, and I'm about to graduate. And I think, if I become a teacher, then I'll never do anything with this whole creative life I have inside me. I knew I could do it. So I said, okay, I'm going to take a risk. And I went, one day, I went, and I, there's a, Steven Spielberg, do you guys know who he is? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now he's an old man, and he makes some kind of not so good. Things. But at the time, this guy was everything that came out of him was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The guy's a genius. So he was on the cover of Time magazine. This is when people read magazines, and it was on the cover of Time magazine. And he said he's going to open an animation division over at Warner Brothers. So what I did was I took my chemistry notes. I used to doodle during my take notes. I would teach myself chemistry by doing drawings. Like I would draw these two guys, or these molecules are talking to each other. It's like, okay, I'm gonna share with you. you know, and I would, this is how I would teach myself chemistry, by drawing stuff. Um, and I took those drawings into Warner Brothers. And they were pretty good, actually. They were, they were funny. And I was sitting there one day, and I saw these people going to lunch. There used to be a Taco Bell. Now there's like a really expensive hot dog place. But there used to be a Taco Bell there. And here's all these secretaries and stuff, and they're walking across the street. And I'm thinking, if these people can work at Warner Brothers, I can do it. So I, I went in to, it said Warner Brothers, and I took my notes in, and I showed them my drawings. And they said, wow, these are really good. Too bad this is Warner Music. We, we, don't, we don't do anything with that. So then they directed me. And anyway, I found my way into the animation thing that they were starting up. And I got hired as an animator. Now, I knew nothing about animation. I had not taken a single class. There's people that go through Cal Arts. Have you ever heard of Cal Arts? And Art Center and all these really expensive schools. And I didn't do any of that. I was a biology guy. And I got a job at Warner Brothers. And I started working. And then pretty soon... Um, I'm designing shows. I'm in meetings with Steven Spielberg. I was on a 2020, which is like a 60 minutes kind of like show with him. Um, it was really fun. I, it just kind of took off. I just, I just got involved in stuff. And this is why like getting in with other people is so important because it doesn't matter if the place you're at is the fanciest place in the world or not. It doesn't really matter. It's being around other people where stuff is happening. And then you learn how to share your creativity. I'm going to tell you, there's a, there's a monster in this house. And the monster is, that's my idea. Now, when you hear that come out of your mouth, you know it stinks like poop. Because, yeah, because that, I, this is, I had one director teach me this lesson. It's the greatest thing I ever learned, is that the idea is the important thing. That's the baby. That's the thing you're all taking care of. Your idea, your show, is like a little baby that you're taking care of, that you're growing. 
And when you think of like, that's my idea. That's like saying, that's my leg. That's my finger. That's my eye. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to, you want to always share your creative ideas. Now I'm going to show you some stuff. So this is, this is me when I had that cool hat. Um, now I've, I've done a couple of things. Um, uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog. I don't know if any of you ever seen Clifford. Clifford, I directed all those things. That was with John Ritter, who is such a sweet guy. The guy that did the voice for that was the sweetest guy in the world. And when he came on to do the voice for Clifford, he had a real problem because he was a very physical actor. In other words, he was always acting and getting you to laugh because of how he held his body and how facial expressions and stuff. You know, it was always, he was always hiding somebody in the kitchen or something like that. And, and when he had to do the voice for Clifford, it was very difficult for him. It wasn't working at first. And he was like, oh my gosh. And instead of being like a, a, a like selfish and, and saying, hey, this isn't working, blah, blah, blah. He felt bad. He goes, you know what? I'm not doing a good job. So he and I went and we sat out in this room and we just went over stuff. And he said, I got to get this. And he just worked at it, worked at it. And then we went back into the room and he, and he nailed it. And he did great. For We did like 60, what? 64 half hours of that show. And he did wonderful at it. He was wonderful. Um, unfortunately, he passed away. Um, and then Pinky and the Brain. Have you, any of you ever seen yes. Pinky and the Brain? Yes. Nars. Yes. Nars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to do Day Brain. And then the same thing we do every day, take over the world. Um, yes, that was, that, it's funny, that, that show, I worked on that for um, uh, many years and did designs for that show. Um, and then there's some, probably something you don't know much about, but uh, that, that was like this show Jakers down here with uh, this little pig guy. And that show, we won uh, a bunch of awards. I, I got a bunch of awards at home that just gathered dust. But it's um, a bunch of Emmy awards. That's kind of like the Oscars for TV. Um, so I got a bunch of uh, Emmy awards, and uh, my wife has an Emmy award as well from working on that show. Um, and I got a, a British Academy Award and I, a bunch of these little humanitas things that really gather the dust, those guys. But the, the point of all that is, is that it's nice to do something and then get some recognition for it, whatever it is. So it's why it's really good. You probably enroll in like contests and stuff like that. It's really fun to do. It's a good thing to do. It's good to put your work up against other people. It's a healthy competition. So anyway, these are some of the shows I've done. Um, Ant the Aardvark, I don't know if you've ever seen that show. It oh, used to run with the Pink Panther. Panther. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's an aardvark and it talks like this, I gotta get that ant. That ant is gonna do it. Okay, anyway, that was a show. So here we go. Let's go through the next, can we go to the next slide? So there's a picture of me like 50 years ago. Now, <laughs> um, when you come on to a show, for example, now, when I went on to Ant the Aardvark, they were having a lot of problems. The director was not good, and the producer was not good, and they'd been goofing off for like a year and a half. And they'd spent all their money, and they hadn't sent anything to Cartoon Network. So Cartoon Network was mad, MGM was mad, and the people over in Jordan that were putting up all the money, they were mad. So I come in, and this is what they had designed. That guy, this guy right here, I'm going to tickle him. There he is. That guy is what they design. Now, does that look like a, a Cartoon Network, like, young teenager to you? No. Not really. Not to me. No. Looks like an old man, like a greeter at Walmart. Is what looks like. <laughs> so, and the same with this ant, supposed to be, like, 12 years old or something. It didn't look like right. So, anyway, I redesigned him in more of a Cartoon Network-y fun mm -hmm. style. And I thought about, when you're designing a character, you got to think about, like, what is he going to do? What kind of stuff is this guy going to do? So I used to think, I wanted him to be all stretchy. I wanted him to like get his nose caught and then to be stretching it out and all that stuff. Well, this guy looks like, he, you know, literally, he's filled with guts. Like if he stretched his head, his head would come off. So this, this guy looks more stretchy. So that's, I kind of redesigned him that way. Then I redesigned the backgrounds and stuff. And this is one thing that you want to do. Whenever you do video games, whatever you guys are doing, you think about how what you're doing is going to be played don't think about you. Think about who's watching it, who's playing it. You don't want to be thinking about you. So I was thinking about if I'm watching this show and I'm this character, I'm this creepy uh, aardvark, this guy right here, and all I want to do is eat this ant. I wanted, they had a house for him that looked like a, a, a cute little cottage. It, was, it looked like Snow White's house. 
and he's got little little flowers planted out front and stuff. Now this guy's a creep. He's not gonna plant flowers. Oh, I gotta water these begonias. No. So I put him up on this craggy mountain, up a twisted path, and then he's got a telescope and he watches everybody down below. That puts him in like a. I'm spitting and you're getting it. You're good. This is good. Um, it, it gets. It, it makes him in a predator mode. Like like he's after that man. Okay, so we'll go on. So I redesigned the backgrounds. We just redesigned everything for that show, and it ended up winning a bunch of awards. Okay, we go on. So, so now, whenever you design a character, you've got to think, how does that character look against the background? If you're in a, designing a video game, for instance, and you can't tell your character from the background, you, people easily lose interest. So you want something that's going to pop against that background. So we designed this, this background here. See how there's... It, it gives you the impression of a jungle, but there's really no individual leaves. This is the problem with drawing hair, by the way. <laughs> like when my kids draw hair, you know what they do? They draw every single hair. <laughs> you don't do that. You draw the shape of the hair, the shape of the hair. Same with the jungle. I'm suggesting plants. I don't have to draw all the individual leaves. I suggest the leaves with the color. This stuff is the foreground element. And, and you notice how it's dark. It's in the foreground. It's a different color. So in this place, I don't have any detail around the character here. I'm leaving that clear so that you can see the, the uh, I'm sorry, you guys got to look at my big fat head. Here. Um, <laughs> but there's no, I'll just take for yeah, what I'm saying. It's true. There's no detail around, around him. Then you think about what is his room like? This is one the great thing that Steven Spielberg once said. We were coming up with this character, and he said, it was in a school, and he says, okay, we're designing this character. He says, all right, all right, let's think about what might be in his locker. Now, we're never going to show his locker. You're never going to see his locker, but you think about what might be in the locker. So that, that's kind of what we do here. We think, okay, here's this guy. What does his house look like? What does his room look like? And then this is what it looks like at night. So you do that same little craggy thing, and there's a little nighttime vision. Um, this is another show I did. This is where uh, I used to spend a lot of time down in Mexico, and I, I fell in love with these little towns and these little villages. Um, they didn't have a lot of money, but they were so charming. And so I designed this show around, around that. Um, and we can go to the next one. It's about a brother and sister. Now, this is an idea I had about a pet show, about a pet shop. And then it, so I'm designing these little characters. And it's, it's fun to think of um, when you're designing a character, you think about what is this character like to do? What does he or she, what, is, what are they about? So, so I'm thinking for each of these guys, I'm thinking this is a grumpy little guy. This is a grumpy, you, you know what a Sharpay is? It's a, a dog who's got like, he's about this big, but he's got the skin of a dog that big. Yeah. So he's got all these extra skin all over him. It's a, so he's a grumpy little crabby guy. So I thought that'd be fun to have all these layers of, of, of fold the skin all over him. And so you're designing these characters all with different um, personality traits. You, you, know, you can kind of get an idea of who they are. This guy's really innocent with the big eyes. And the, um, this was, some friends of mine had an idea. They were writers on a show I was on. And they said, the, the reason I'm showing you all these is because I'm, I'm showing you, you can draw all sorts of different styles. You can come up with all sorts of, this is like looking at characters. So um, this was about a... Uh, a bunch of moon rocks that escape from the Smithsonian, and they they form uh, they they want to make a rocket and go back home, but in order to do that they need they need to you know get materials and stuff. So they go into a trash can. Here they hear the rocks right here. That's what they look like. But they go into a trash can and they find a bunch of stuff and they make a kid out of it. So it's a stick and a glove and an oven mitt and a baseball hat. And then they form this kid that lives in the trash can. And the school bus stops at the trash can and picks him up. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the other kids think he's just weird. Um, so like dogs bite him and he never even minds. Um, anyway, that was, that was another little thing we were designing up. Okay, next one. Now this was, this was something that is near and dear to my heart, still is. Um, I was at a, a conference once, and this Senator Harkin came up to me, and, and he's a big guy in the government, or he was, and he said, the U.S. is getting killed in sciences. If we look around the world, U.S. used to be bing, right on top. 
Now we've been tink, booted off, as it were, by South Korea and by uh, Singapore and by China and by Japan and by like 40 other countries. We're way down. We, we, we are losing our interest in science. Even though we do all these marvelous scientific stuff, as a, as a nation, our kids are starting to score badly in science. So, he said, could you design a show that would want to teach science? So that's what this was about. This is about a, a show about a monster medic. A guy that was a medic to all these monsters around the world. Um, and so it was a very colorful thing. I pitched this at, at, at um, PBS and at Cartoon Network and at Disney and everywhere. Disney just said, can they fart a lot? And I thought, no. <laughs> uh, I, I really want to like, get people interested in becoming doctors and such. So that's what this, this show is about. And so there's scary moments and there's, there's uh, funny moments. And it's, it's, it, was, it was really a fun project. And I'm, I'm doing this as a book now because people thought it was too educational. Sad, sad, too bad. Because um, it was going to be very funny. Okay, next slide. So this is how this show starts out. You start out with a monster. And then you go to our characters, you know. So this would, uh, an example of this show, you'd start out, here's a guy working in an office place. Then, then, yeah, he's a little stiff, a little stiff. He's working, he steps out into the cold, he sneezes, and he can't keep up the, the fake any longer. He takes off his mask, and he's this giant fly, snot pouring out of him. And then he drops the mask, and then suddenly everybody sees him. You can't see it very well, but everybody sees him in there, dogs barking and police yelling, and everybody's like, oh my God, it's a monster. And the lightning's striking, and woo this is where the theremin plays. And he runs to the back alley, and they've cornered him. He goes down this alley, and he falls into a big pile of his snot. And, then, and we go to the next one. And then with his last feeble breath. Oh, uh, yeah, next, next slide. Thanks. He summons the monster mechs, and they come out, and they saw him stuff. So I was doing these storyboards. This was for a, a gag. But um, let's go to the next one. We're going to shuffle by a few of these. Uh, and these are, like, when you're acting a scene out, you get the, the dialogue from the actor. So it's going to sound like, you know, hey, do you work out? Yeah, I do. Can we see? And then he's going to show you his beautiful body. <laughs> well, that's when the foghorn goes off. <laughs> there, this was a, there was an ad that used to show this guy. And they'd show some guy sitting there. And they'd say, do you work out? And he'd say, yeah. And they'd take off his jacket. And, of course, he's all ripped and everything like that. So I'm kind of playing. Oh, yeah. that, like, do you work out? Yeah. And then he takes off. Okay, we go to the next one. So we see him. And then he's going to, like, flex his kneecaps for you. He's going to flex his arm for you. He's going to flex his chins up there. He's going to flex his butt cheeks. And then he's going he's, he's gonna, to he's gonna flex his disappearing elbow. So it's just fun. It's just fun. Everybody loves this. All right, we go to the next one. And then they say, you know, oh, wow, how do you work out? And it's because he eats chocolate. Oh. <laughs> when you're presenting an idea, you have to make it a little bit bigger. So that's why your poses are bigger. Your ideas are bigger when you, when you do something, on, when you're drawing something out. So if you're ever posing out a character, you're acting something out, just make sure the audience, what's called, reads it. You can read that he's, he's going to put some cream on his face. He, he presents the cream, and then he puts it on his face. Okay, we go on. This is storyboarding. Um, it's very time consuming. It's very hard work. If you're not doing that, if you're doing little shorts and stuff, it's, it's doable. You can do it. But you always want like nice staging, nice acting. Okay, we move on. Okay, now, these are different fun designs. I thought of like, what if one guy tried this? So a guy in one of my shows, he was like going to work out. So he's like grabbing these pencils and he's working out. But what if he only worked out one arm? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Um, then uh, these are just different characters that I did for other other things and, and looking at people and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, we move on. This was a guy I worked with. This guy here, and he was always smoking and he was always walking like he always looked to me like a big like comma. And 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 he was always like grumpy and, and uh, yeah, 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 this kind of thing. So that that was his. You get a gist for how somebody is, you know, just a feeling. Again, line of action here. Um, okay, we move on. Okay, now, Farfo. I had nothing to do with this, but I love it. <laughs> this is a real candy that you would get a little guy with a head and this little accordion, and it'd be filled with some syrupy junk. 
and you would squeeze it, and the guy would throw up into your mouth. All right, what is a story when you're telling a story? Okay, and we go to the next one. It's a series of events that are teaching you a value. They're teaching you something about a character. If I told you a story about my, how my cat ate uh, three bags of food today and threw up all over the floor, that would give you a value lesson. It would teach you about how my cat, what, eats too much, right? Don't eat too much. You'll throw up. So I'll give you an example. Now, this is the original newspaper thing of the Titanic. People read this and said, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Somebody wrote a book called A Night to Remember, Mr. Walter Lord. Okay. We go, we go on. Oh, 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 there you go. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack. Gross. Because when this comes up on the screen, especially if you're in a high school, all the girls go, oh, my God. Okay. We go, we go on. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, Jack, Jack, gross. Because when this comes up on the screen, especially if you're in a high school, all the girls go, oh my God. And they get all like, because suddenly they didn't do that to the newspaper article, and they didn't do that to the book. Why did they do that to him? It, we have people we really care about that are on the sinking boat, so we care. I show you the newspaper clipping. Oh, yeah, how many people died? Oh, it's shame, shame. <laughs> but this, but, but because we care about these two, it's, it's horribly heart-wrenching, right? So this is the power of story. We move on. Okay, sharks, yes. same thing. I grew up in San Diego in the 70s, and there are lots of books like this. Nobody gave two wits about a shark. Nobody cared about sharks at all. Then... This movie came out, oh, yeah. and people awesome. were literally terrified of going in the water. People were scared. <laughs> the same beach, two months later, nobody's going in the water. Why? Because <laughs> it's a story. Because we have characters we care about, and a really amazing graphic here, we, we suddenly care about sharks. Okay, next one. We care about Jaws, because not because we care about the shark. We care about Jaws because we care about this guy right here, Brody. He's really the whole star of Jaws, not the shark. Jaws 2? Jaws 2 was bad because it was all about the shark. We care about this guy when he's out on the boat. There's this great scene where he, they're all showing their scars, and then he looks at his little appendix scar. This makes him human to us. He's, he's like a normal guy. Okay, we move on. Okay, now. Boom, yes. Whoa. This is a great movie. It's a great movie. I yeah. love this film. Lawrence of Arabia. Now, I'm going to show you something about how to stage something. We go to the next slide, please. Now, here's Lawrence right here. He's some English guy. Hello. I'm I'm not from the I'm not from the desert. I'm from I'm from England. So he's out in the desert and he's with his guide. That's his desert guide right there. And they're out here and they're at this well and they're stealing water from this guy's some somebody's well. And this guy says, Don't worry, it's okay to steal the water. No one will ever come. He's going, how you show? And then, boom, here comes this figure coming in the distance. Now, this is so beautifully staged. There's Lawrence. There's his guy. And here comes, in between them, this mystery figure. So what happens is, this guy right here comes into the scene, shoots that guy, and takes his place for the rest of the movie. This is what you're here to learn, is how to stage things. Have you seen this movie, Her? No. Yeah. Her is about a guy who falls in love with his computer. So, before he falls in love with his computer, this is his life. Does he look like a happy guy? No. 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 Sure, sure. Sure. Okay. But then he, fall, he meets his computer, who is the voice of uh, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. And he falls in love. Now, look how much red is in this shot. A lot. She's red, and then now he's got the red shirt. There's a red book, there's a red envelope on the two red envelopes. Outside we have red, now keep going, next. Now he's got a red jacket, and lo and behold, his hair starts to turn red. And throughout the movie, he gets more and more red. Okay, keep going. Okay, yeah. it's this movie probably none of you have seen called Toy Story 2. Yeah, okay. I've seen it. We've all seen it a million times. Yes. Okay, now, let's go to the clip. In this scene, now, here's Jessie up here. Is she feeling good? No. Nope. She's feeling bad. Yeah. She's, she's feeling bad because he's going to go back to his owner, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she's abandoned yet again. 
So now, what what is this this little scene? Now, everything in a movie is not by accident. It's all there because someone designed it to be that way. Why is she facing that way? Like, if you're going to ask somebody out to dance and they do that to you, is that a good sign? No. 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 Look, she's facing out the window. And then what's she looking at? She's looking at blue sky. Okay, here we go. Now, look at where she is, by the way. She's up above. He's down below. Now, one secret about filmmaking is that whoever has the higher ground often has the authority. That means that she knows something that Woody doesn't. Now, isn't that weird? That's all in this shot before a single word's been said. She's higher than he is. He's coming up to, to her. She's not going to him. He's going to her. Okay, play this. Look, Jesse, I know you hate me for leaving. Now, is she still looking at I have to go back. I'm still no. Andy's toy. That's okay. Well, if you knew him, you'd understand. You see, Andy's Let me a... guess. Andy's a real special kid. So I'm just going to point out a couple things. Like, for example, um, she's looking out the window, right? He's mm-hmm. down below. She's got the authority. She knows something he doesn't know, that, that he can be forgotten. Look at this down shot here. She's still, is she facing him at all? No. 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 And then she goes to tell her story. Hey, listen, the kids all love you. And then she goes to tell her story. And as she does, she's looking out the window. That's a perfect place for her to be to look into the past. You know, she's not looking at a magazine. She's not sitting on the toilet. No, No, she's looking out the window. So it's a perfect thing for her to remember how it used to be. So now we go to, this is just, when you go to design, you video game guys or anybody designing any scene, we go to her memory. Now, here's this girl's room. I ask you, women here, no. Is this how your room looked like as a kid? No. no. Anybody? Kind of. No. Who here, does their bedroom look like this? It was never um, that clean. No, no, there's no. nothing in this room. Why is there nothing in this room? Now, John Lasseter had to sign off on this. Some background guy worked for months on this room. There, there would be posters, and, and you know, if you're designing this room, you'd say, oh, a girl, okay. What would she have? She'd have uh, Taylor Swift and blah, 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 which is... I was the center of this girl's life. Now, here's the beauty of this scene. This is what chokes me up. This isn't reality. This is her memory of it. This is her memory. And her memory is she is all that this girl's about. It's wonderful. It's so beautiful. That's why it hurts so bad when she left. But I want you to notice something about when we come back. Where's Woody? Yes. He's up there with her. He's up on her level now. Isn't that great? Isn't that beautiful? Uh That now she's turned toward him. Mm -hmm. They're having a conversation. She's opened up to him now. And he's on the same level. Now he understands. Now he understands. This is the power of storytelling. Visual storytelling. So when you get get any assignment and you think, okay, I I just got to show that these two guys are going to go buy bananas. There's so much fun to be had in it. How do they get the bananas? Mm. But think about the content of what you're doing. Put in good ideas like in that clip. Think okay. about think about that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Oh. Oh. Thank you.